Cisco Electric here. Now on my channel, I cover everything that you can drive, fly, and ride electric. When it comes to electric bikes, I usually feature ones that are recreational bikes that are accessible and affordable to a wide audience. But this bike in front of me has a price tag of nearly $7,000. It's unlike any other e-bike that I've ridden or reviewed. It is actually designed to replace your second car. This here is the Civilized Cycles Model 1. Usually I dive right into specifications and components, but I feel it's really important to talk a little bit about the origin story of this company. An American entrepreneur named Zach Shefflin owned the nation's largest Vespa dealer. And when he sold it, he set out to design an e-bike that could do everything that a scooter could do, but without all of the licensing, insurance, and maintenance requirements that a scooter has. It took many iterations to get to this point, and I'm gonna tell that story more when I meet up with the C CEO at their offices in Brooklyn, New York. I believe this is the first review of a final production Model 1, so I'm gonna go into great detail about this bike, and let's start off by talking about what this bike can do. The biggest functionality difference on this bike might be right here. These are two pannier sets that have a hard shell, and on the outside, it looks like a carbon fiber design, but when they're folded up like this, they can hold 20 liters, and then when you pull them out, you can get up to 80 liters of storage. That's enough space for four full grocery bags. This is waterproof and lockable storage. Inside the pannier, you'll find the battery that this bike comes with, which is 10 and a half amp hours and 48 volts. So that's equivalent to 504 watt hours. And that will get you up to 30 miles of range, says Civilized Cycles. Now, if you want to double your range, you can get a second battery and put that in the other pannier. The battery in here is lightweight and easy to get out because it's just mounted here with Velcro. This battery contains either Panasonic or LG cells, and I like seeing a name brand cell for safety reasons. It's very easy to get in and out of here, and the fact that you can take it inside to charge it is a nice bonus for me, and it has a status indicator light to let you know how much it is charged. This also has two USB-A ports here so that you can plug in other devices and charge up and use this like a power bank. You might have seen my other e-bike reviews, but I talk about this all the time. I really wish more manufacturers would take advantage of putting USB ports here so that you can use this for more than just powering up your bike. The Model 1 comes with a 3 amp charger, which Civilized Cycles says it should take about three hours to fully charge it. Now, I don't have a second battery, so I've been just keeping my charger right here in the other pannier. So I really like that you can bring it with you in secure storage. When the panniers are fully extended, they're a little bit wider than a traditional bike. So for visibility, they've added some reflective material back here on the back of the pannier. And I really like that because I think it's a great safety bonus. And then when you close the panniers, they actually are super easy to open and close because they have this magnetic feature where they just clip to the bike. Another function of this hard shell is to prevent the water from spraying up from the road onto the driver and passenger. That's right, I said passenger. This bike is designed to carry two adults. The rear passenger will grip the bike with their legs around the pannier and the pannier will help protect their legs and their clothing from getting caught up in the wheel. Civilized Cycle says the maximum payload is 385 pounds. I've never seen a design like this before, but I think it's really cool and very practical. We've talked about the cargo and the passenger functionality, but let's talk more about this frame and find out how they made this possible. The first thing that I notice about this aluminum frame, other than its very unique design, is I don't see a chain, a motor, or a shifting system. So how do they do it? This is probably the smallest chain ring I've ever seen, but behind this shroud, there's a chain that connects here to a jack shaft. There's a second chain that connects the jack shaft to the wheel. And then there's a third chain that connects the mid-drive motor to the jack shaft. So yes, you heard me, this is a mid-drive motor. It's not right here at the pedals like we would typically see. It's really nicely integrated and hidden and concealed behind the pannier. 
As far as the transmission goes, this has a five-speed Sturmey Archer internal hub. Internal hubs are great because they are very robust and they're very little maintenance. You might have to tighten up the shifter cable every once in a while, but that's about it. So how does this perform? Well, this bike is originally shipped as a class two e-bike, meaning that it tops out at 20 miles per hour, but you can unlock it and make it a class three e-bike, getting up to 28 miles per hour while pedaling. And that's all thanks to its 750 watt mid-drive motor. We talked about how this bike can go, but let's talk about how it can stop. This includes Tektro Dorado high-end four piston hydraulic brakes. It has 203 millimeter rotors up front and 180 millimeter rotor in the back. The Model 1 weighs about 90 pounds and with two passengers on board, that's about 500 pounds that you're pushing and you're really gonna wanna have good hydraulic brakes for that, but also rubber on the road. These tires up front are Schwalbe Balloon Big Ben Plus tires that are 26 inch by 2.15 inches wide. So it should be a good combination of efficiency and grip. On to more safety. First, the rear tail light. This is integrated into the frame, which is really unique, but it's also got this peak on the side. So if I'm pressing those brake lights, you can still see them on the side of the bike as well as on the back. I like that it is connected to the battery of the bike, so I don't have to take it out and recharge it. Next up is the headlamp. And this one looks like it's gonna be nice and bright and have a really wide angle. It's connected to the battery of the bike, which I really like. Civilized Cycle says that the headlamp has an auto dimming feature. So when other riders at nighttime are passing you, it doesn't blind them. I'm not gonna be able to test that out today, but it does seem like a really cool feature. Now let's move on to these turn signals. To operate them, you just press this button on the end of the handle and then press it again once you're done to turn them off. I really like this concept, but the problem is, is that these are not integrated with the power of the bike. They are an aftermarket piece that are pretty common and you have to unscrew them and replace the batteries when those run out. I would prefer if they were running off the power of the bike. Now let's talk about comfort. This front fork is mechanical and is made by Manitow. It has 80 millimeters of travel and includes preload and lockout adjustments. Let's talk about the rear suspension. This is very unique, but before I do that, I do want to take it off the kickstand. This is a dual sided kickstand, which makes it really stable when you have it up in this position. And they say not to put a lot of load on it. So if you are putting a passenger back here, you need to kick it down first. The suspension needs for one passenger versus two passengers is gonna be very different. So Civilized Cycles included an air suspension back here, similar to what you would find in a high-end mountain bike, but this one is regulated by a compressor. So let me show you how that works. First, you wanna power on the computer by pressing this button on top of the control pad. And now that the screen is on, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that all of your weight is on the bike and then press the up button what the bike is gonna do is the screen will turn black and you'll have a little compression icon in the top left. It'll release all the air and then it will fill with air to give you to that perfect balanced spot. I have never seen a feature like that before and I can't imagine how it rides, but I'm ready to experience it and find out myself. So let's get to it. I'm gonna start off spy pedaling with no assist on and see how easy it is to pedal. I'm on the first shifting point and pretty, pretty easy. I mean, it, it does feel like a bit of weight, so I wouldn't wanna do this for too long, but at least on a flat surface like this, it's doable. And let me just move up into that first pedal assist mode. That motor's kicking in. This bike also has a torque sensor and a cadence sensor, which means that essentially whenever I push down on the pedal, it's giving me the appropriate amount of power that I'm looking for based on that pressure and not necessarily because of the wheels or the pedals spinning like a cadence sensor. But since this has both, it kind of accomplishes the tasks of keeping it nice and smooth and giving me power exactly when I want it. So I really like that. Lots of people out here. One thing so far that I'm noticing is that I would definitely like a horn, an electric horn, at the very least a bell, but I think an electric horn would probably be better because if you're gonna use this as a second car 
and you'll be on the streets with people. You want it to be a little bit louder so that cars can hear you. So far, I'm really enjoying this riding position. I am sitting pretty much completely upright. These handlebars come out really wide and it's a very comfortable riding position. Going over this little bridge here. You know, so far I will say, you're all right, thank you. So far I will say just going off on the grass there and going over that little bridge, it's pretty amazing how the suspension performs because it's very, very smooth. Like I don't feel barely anything when I'm going over these cracks. This is an excellent suspension system. The step through design definitely makes it really easy to get on and off. I like that it has a full coverage fender up front and then the whole back end is covered so that pretty much seems like there's no doubt I'll be completely clean after riding a bike like this, even in, pet, in puddles and wet conditions. The saddle on this bike is a little bit more firm than I like. I'd probably also want something a little bit wider, especially if I'm gonna be riding this a lot as a second vehicle. All right, I'm gonna start off by doing a throttle test. So I'll have to adjust this uh, transmission here, this Sturmy Archer, by twisting it up into the different gears in order to reach my top speed. So right now I am in no pedal assist mode. I'll move up into those pedal assist modes as we go along with using the throttle here on the right side. It is a half twist throttle, um, but let's see how this performs off the bat. And I'll put it in pedal assist one so that way the throttle will work and we'll start off in the first gear. So, three, two, one. All right, and as I mentioned, I'm in that first gear and I have the throttle twisted back all the way and I'm hitting about 12 miles per hour or so and that's where I'm kind of capped out. That's when I have to start shifting gears in order to move up to my top speed. So when you are shifting out with a bike like this that has an internal uh, hub, you're gonna want to let off of any kind of load and then shift. So let me do that. And then up is twisting down. All right, and I'm gonna move up into the second pedal assist mode. Now the throttle is fully back and I'm in the second gear and second pedal assist. And as you can see, I've already gone up to about 14 and a half miles an hour. Let's do that again, shifting up to the third gear. And then let me put it in pedal assist three. All right, and I'm picking up speed now. Let's see where we can hit the top speed in the third pedal assist. It looks like about 18 miles per hour, 18 and a half miles per hour. Let's shift up again. I'm gonna go up to five and get up to the fifth pedal assist mode. So let's open it up and see how fast we can get this. This is throttle only in the fifth shift point and the fifth pedal assist. And I'm hitting 22, 23, it's a good straightaway. It's Capped at about 23, it looks like. Climbing a little bit more. I'm hitting a half point there, but I'm gonna come to a stop here. Look, oh, 24. Oh, it could get to about 25 if I had a little bit more time. So far, I can say that I really like the computer screen and the colors that it uses to indicate the different pedal assist modes. The text is big enough for me to be able to read the miles per hour, the duration of time I've been riding. You can cycle through them to see different um, trip odometers and things of that nature. Um, one thing I wish that this computer had was a USB port so that I could plug in my phone 
and charge it while I was riding from the battery from the bike. And I also wish that it had GPS in it so I didn't have to utilize my phone because if this is really going to be a replacement for a second car, I want to have a lot of the things that I'm used to having for commuting, like GPS navigation. And yeah, I added a phone mount here, but I wish they had it integrated at this price point so that I could navigate while I'm riding on this bike. Now that I've been riding around a lot, let's get two people on this bike so that we can see how it's gonna perform. This suspension is outstanding. I have never experienced anything quite like this, but I can't feel any of these bumps I'm going over. If you have a passenger back there, you want it to be comfortable for them. But also if you have items in your panniers back there, you don't want them you know, moving around a lot either or creating a lot of drop when you hit a bump with all that weight. They say 25 pounds is the maximum load capacity in those panniers. All right, I have ridden on the Civilized Cycles Model 1 for about 35 miles now. I've charged it once, and I think you should be able to expect about 20 miles with this 10.5 amp hour battery. And that's probably for a couple of reasons. One being that this is a pretty heavy bike. It's about 90 pounds, but also you have a little bit extra drag with three different chains. You also have the fact that it's a riding position where you're sitting very upright, so it's a little less aerodynamic. This bike has an exceptional price tag of about $7,000, but it is an exceptional bike in many ways. So let's talk about those things that I've enjoyed about this bike, and then we'll talk about the improvements I'd like to see as the company grows and iterates on this next generation. First and foremost is the ride quality. This air suspension in the back makes a huge difference. I can ride over anything and I don't feel a thing. And not only that, but when I add a passenger on here, it is extremely stable, much more than I thought it would be. And it's also super comfortable. I reviewed other cargo bikes and I have seen a lot of different cargo bikes. And usually the passengers that you can put in the back are just kids not necessarily a full adult. And if you do put all that weight back there, it's not as stable as you would hope it would be. But this I can say, I can confidently ride this with a passenger on the back and not feel like I'm gonna fall over at all, even when I'm turning and hard braking. And there's more utility when we start to talk about the panniers because when these are fully open, you can fit four full grocery bags in here. And I just think that this is wonderful to be able to take things with you. It's waterproof storage and it's secure because it has a combination lock on those clasp mechanisms. I just think that if you're a student and you have books that you wanna bring with you, or if you wanna bring different layers of clothes in the Florida weather, it can be different in the morning than it is in the afternoon. I think this is a good resource to be able to take all these items with you and have it protected and clean. I have ridden this bike up and down the promenade and all over town and people keep stopping me to ask me what it is. It is definitely an eye-catching design and they've been saying that. They've also not even blinked when I've said that the price tag is $7,000. So there's something to that. Although this silver design is pretty subtle, there are a couple different colors you can choose from, red and black. I still think that this is a very sleek and modern refined finish. So the seats, they look like a good high quality material and they feel rather nice, although I'd like a little bit wider and more spongier for 
the driver. I really think this is an elegant looking bike and definitely unique, no doubt. As far as ergonomics goes, this is one of the most comfortable bikes that I have ridden because of the upright position and also the placement of the handlebars. They are very wide and sweep all the way back, so it really makes it comfortable for me sitting upright on this bike. I've also ridden on the back of this bike as a passenger and I was so surprised as to how stable and comfortable it was back here. I was able to put my foot on those foot rests and then keep my legs tight with a good grip against the pannier bags, the hard shell there, and still feel super secure. Not only that, but the air suspension on this is nothing that I've ever seen or experienced before. It is especially comfortable as a passenger back here because it smooths out all the bumps. It is an incredibly smooth ride. When it comes to brakes, this has all the stopping power that you would ever need, even when you have a full-size passenger on the back. Those are some of the strengths of the Model 1, but now let's talk about some opportunities for improvement. In no particular order, but let's start off with the kickstand. I like that it is a dual kickstand design, but it is really challenging for me to get it up on the kickstand, not so much when I'm bringing it down off of the kickstand. And I might have to just do a little bit more work. I'm trying to practice this, but it always just seems like it's a little bit too hard for me to get it up on there. Next is the placement of my foot on the pedal and where it is in relationship to the wheel. So when I sit on the bike and I put my foot on the pedal, usually I have it in the middle of where my foot is positioned. But on this bike, if I do that and I turn the wheel, my foot hits the wheel. But if I move my foot all the way back, then when I'm pedaling, the back of my shoe rubs against the pannier. Most of the e-bikes that I review are shipped to me directly from the manufacturer to my studio, and then I have to build them but that's not the case with a bike like this. Civilized Cycles has dealer partners and they ship their bikes to those dealer partners so that professionals can build the bike and then deliver it to the customer. Now, in my case, I took delivery of this bike at a dealer that didn't have any experience with this bike before that. So that might have something to do with the small list of grievances that I have here. And starting with this piece here, is supposed to be attached with a metal bracket and that was broken off. There's also a piece of the plastic from the pannier attaching to the bike that is broken off. And lastly, there is a defect right above the tail lamp in the paint. And all of this is cosmetic, but when you're spending this much money, you definitely want to have it come perfect. And it's hard to say whether or not this was from the manufacturer or from the dealer that set this up. Speaking of aesthetics, these are some very high quality welds, but I tend to like them buffed out so that I can't see them. So I definitely would prefer that on this bike. And also the cable management here, although the length of the cable seems perfect for when I'm maneuvering the bike, they're just attached together with zip ties. I wish that there was some kind of shroud to make it a little bit more refined. I already said that the seats look great, but they could stand to be more comfortable, a little bit wider, and the same goes for the passenger seat back here. I would really like to see a short seat back as well. Now, Civilized Cycle says that this could be a bike that would replace a second vehicle, and in a lot of ways, it definitely can, but there are some things that I'd like to see included that would really make it practical for a second vehicle. First is phone power and placement. I wish that they had an integrated mount here so that I can use maps really easily and had it in a good eye line. But now I have to add a third party mount, which kind of messes up with the aesthetic. And I really want to be able to charge my phone while I'm riding. I really like the idea of these turn signals, but the visibility is not great because the way that the handlebars come back, my body is blocking from one side or the other if someone is coming up on my side. So the visibility is not that great. I would prefer to see them on the rear of the bike, right in the frame here or on that plastic piece. There are other bikes that are much lower price point that have them integrated. So I really wanna see Civilized Cycle integrate them here. The other thing that I need to be safe while riding in traffic is a horn. Something that is loud enough for people to know that I am nearby and get their attention. Lastly, if I'm gonna be replacing a car with this, then I need mirrors and I would rather not have to buy something off of Amazon that would kind of ruin the aesthetic. I wish that they had something that was already integrated that enhanced the design of this bike. Vespa is an example of a brand that does this well. 
I prefer a thumb throttle over a half twist throttle. And if you're gonna use a bike like this to be your second vehicle in a commuter that you ride every day, and you do have a half twist throttle, I think it should have cruise control. So I definitely would like them to implement that on this bike. Lastly is range. This comes with one 10.5 amp hour battery and there are bikes out there that are about a third of the price of this that have 20 amp hour batteries. I wish that the extra battery was standard on this so that you could get that 21 amp hours. On that note, I appreciate that the battery is lightweight and portable and it has two USB ports so that I can use it as a power bank. But I'd really like to see them integrate a light into those batteries. And I've seen other brands do it before, but this would just make it so much easier for me to see inside the panniers when it's dark outside. Overall, there is no other bike like this on the road. It is definitely low volume and I would consider it a collector's bike. If you want to learn more about Civilized Cycles Model 1 and see a list of their dealers, then see the link in the description below. Special thanks to Civilized Cycles for sending me this bike to review. Until next time, drive, fly, ride. Go electric.